technology, diversity, wine, the redwoods, and everything in between. Welcome to the Northern California Bay Area, and one show takes you inside the real estate that makes it all happen. This is By the Bay. Hey everyone, and welcome back to By the Bay. I'm your host, Dan Anchetta, and I'm really grateful that you're here today. Uh, lots of exciting things happening in the residential mortgage world with rate cuts happening uh, with by the Fed last week. And I have a loan officer who has been a friend of mine for a long time. Hannah Escher is here from Mason Mac Mortgage um, here in Sonoma County. So I guess technically we're competitors, but I don't really see it that way. Um, but thanks for being here and, and joining me on, on By the Bay. And would love to get your perspective on things. But before we jump into all that stuff, kind of tell us who you are and how long you've been doing this mortgage thing and, and give us some background about you. Sure. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, First absolutely. of all, I'm really excited to be here and get to chat and get to chat with you all. Um, I'm relatively new to the mortgage space, actually. I've only been in for a couple of years. Okay. Um, I love it, though. And before I was in mortgages, I was in media. Oh. And so I worked in media for over 10 years is what my education is in. I was a director, producer, editor, um, and then moved into digital content. I was in film and television first, moved into digital content. And this love for mortgages, which I actually have a love for mortgages, which is interesting, I guess. But it came about from the purchase of my own home. Okay. So I bought my first home in 2020. Um, which was a great time to buy. Um, knowing what I know now, I could have bought my first home in 2015, which would have even been better. Sure. You know, the sooner you can buy, the, the better. The sooner the better. Yes. Um, but in that process, I ended up using a down payment assistance program and a first time home buyer program. And I used that program because I did all this research about what was available to me as a first time buyer. And my husband and I ended up purchasing a home that was a bit of a fixer-upper. So we were able to use this down payment assistance program through Cal HFA to help us purchase that first home. And then we were able to use our cash reserves that we had been saving to help renovate the home and increase yeah. that property Such a good value. strategy to kind of preserve your cash to yeah. do yeah. the repairs. You know, yeah. we get lots of questions, I'm sure you do too, about like renovation loans and mm -hmm. two or three K loans and all these kind of right. things. And before I'm like, we do do those. We don't originate a ton of them. Yeah. But, you know, before we start going down that path, let's look at some other alternatives yes. so that you don't have to jump through all the hoops of, you know, of, of and two or three K loans are great. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But, um, fabulous product. But yeah, I lo love that idea of using a down payment assistance program, holding on to your own cash so that you can go and do the renovation, you yes. know, with your money. Yes. And it just ended up being what worked for us. Yeah. Um, with the house that we purchased and we were able to still get a conventional loan on the house, you know, it was still in livable condition, um, but it was definitely undervalued. Got it. And in that process, it just opened my eyes to what was possible because I didn't come from a background of knowing about how to purchase a home, which is why I ended up purchasing one five years after I initially probably could have. Yeah. Um, and that process just made me so excited about the possibilities that are actually out here for home ownership mm -hmm. and for so many different types of people, so many different financial situations. Yep. And um, it was, you know, going into that COVID time period, I was interviewing with some of my dream jobs uh, in media and um, some other management positions. And I just felt like, you know, I have to try this. Like, I have to see if this could work because... You know, it's very different, right? It's not this um, type of employment that you are salaried and, you know, have you have a paycheck you can depend on. It's usually commission based. So very different type of um, landscape than what I was used to also with employment and income. Um, but of course, there's lots of opportunity. But that's really what made me interested in this space. And I am so grateful to be in the space because I feel like I've been able to help people and make change in a way that I never did before. And I just absolutely love it. Totally. No, it makes makes sense. And so when did you actually get your license and start originating? 2021. Okay. Yeah. So about a year after you bought your, yeah, your first home. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you entered the market with rates being 
relatively low. Yes. Um, right before rates really started mm-hmm. you know, moving moving up, and now we're in a rate environment that we're probably moving back down. Yeah, is what the trend looks like. Um, so if you could go back in time and like give advice to brand new, just like first day on the job, Hannah, who's just like, hey, I'm a, I got my license and let's make some loans. Uh-huh. What, what would your, what, with your experience now, what would you tell yourself? Um, well, at that point, I didn't realize how amazing the rate opportunity was. And so since starting in this business, I've always focused on purchases, um, which actually has helped me a lot in my business now. But I didn't realize there was such a huge benefit to refinancing at that moment. And now, of course, I know that. Um, but with, since I wasn't as in tune with all of the economic data and history of rates and everything as I am now, which is like what I consume every day as far as content and information, right? that would be the thing, would just be be more aware of where you are historically to see what opportunities might be available. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I was just talking with my, we have like a morning huddle, you know, so it's like talking with our team this morning and we were laughing, not really laughing, we were lamenting, I guess, that in the last refi cycle, people were jumping on an opportunity to save $150. Right. And they were like, let's do it. Hey, if I can go from three and a half to 3% and it saves me $150, like, let's go. Mm -hmm. And I had a call with a client on Friday and I can save for $700 a month. And she's like, do you think we should rate? And I'm like, what? I know that's, I mean, that is what is happening I right mean, now. <laughs> applaud her patience and yes. she's thinking that there might be a better rate ahead. Yes. And I'm like, hey, you don't get only one shot at refinancing. You can refinance exactly. again. Let's take some money off the table. Yes. Here, right. And yeah. then we can always go back. There's no there's no waiting. You don't have to you don't have to wait with the product that she's in. Yes. Like, you can go back and do it again. Absolutely. And and again, I feel like it is that that mindset though around like where we are historically, right? right? Because rates actually historically aren't terrible. It's just we came from such a low, low rate environment that, you know, like you're saying, I'm in the same situation with certain clients as well, where it's like, I could save you five hundred dollars a month, six hundred dollars a month. I don't think we should wait. You know, this can pay itself off in twelve months, right? But it's that mindset where we've seen rates be so low in recent history sure. that, of course, you know, it's difficult to think, well, aren't we going to see that again? Like in a couple of years, in a year or two? And it's like, probably not, you yeah. know? So, I mean, anything is possible. Anything is. I, I don't think that we're going to see rates in the threes again. I mean, it's possible, I don't think so. <clears throat> but I don't know if that's really feasible. Yes. You know, actually like possible to happen, right? So- I most agree. likely, if you're holding out for the like lowest, lowest rate, it's probably going to start with a four. Yeah. At the very, if you timed it perfectly. Sure. But that doesn't mean if you're at seven and a half that you shouldn't take a 6% exactly, rate. Exactly. And then wait again to get right. into the fours later. Exactly. You know, take some money off the table. Yeah. And then go from there. And, and you know, I think it, it it is hard for people when you're looking at this situation, though, right? Because refinances cost money. Sure. Um, you don't have to pay that money out of pocket most of the time, which is one of the best things about refinancing. One of the huge benefits of being a homeowner is that you get to use that equity value in your home. Um, however, you know, we can't predict the future, right? right? And that's something else that I think is important when we're talking about refinancing is like, if you can save a significant amount of money, and the math works out to, hey, you're going to pay off this refinance cost in such a short amount of time. Then it really comes down to, you know, what your risk tolerance is. Right. If you really feel like I just need to wait until I hit this specific number and see if it happens, then great. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we can't predict the future. So no, no. Sometimes but you just need to take the win. Exactly. Take the win, take the money off the table, and then we can always go back and revisit it and, and yeah. keep an eye on it. And, and I you know my my response to those folks is like, hey, let's do this now. Right. Are you really going to be mad that you have you have another opportunity to refi and save another 700 bucks a month? Like, exactly. no, you're going to be thrilled to jump yeah. at that opportunity. And like you said, you can build, most of the time you can build the costs in, into the loan and not come out of pocket and mm-hmm. still realize the benefit and you yeah. can calculate the break even mm-hmm. and, you know, go, hey, this makes a lot of financial sense. And yeah. actually- kind of need to do this like this is this is the right thing to do for you Mm -hmm. so that i think that's really one of the fun parts about 
the cycle that we've just gone through mm -hmm. is that when rates are low and you're just everyone gets a low rate, yeah. there's not a lot of advice that that people like you know that an advisor is really able sure. to provide. But now we're looking at you know debt consolidation and we're looking mm -hmm. at I mean because credit card debt is at an all time high, yeah, and the equity in people's homes is also at an all time mm -hmm. high. So how are you like addressing your clients to go hey? Here's not only an opportunity to get you a lower rate on this debt, but what about all the rest of your debt? What else do you have? How can we help you? Yes. Um, and then, you know, going the step further, um, and we've talked about this offline. So mm -hmm. it's like take, going the step further to actually educate the people on like, how mm -hmm. do you stop using your house as a piggy bank? Yes. And, like build equity. Yes. To, for, to create generational wealth. Yes. And I think you kind of go into this in your bigger pockets, yeah. like YouTube channel right so talk yes. a little bit about that experience because that's cool so yes if, so if people aren't familiar with bigger pockets mm -hmm. tell us what that is and then yeah. how are you interacting with them now sure well i love bigger pockets bigger pockets was one of the platforms that i actually used as a consumer myself when i was getting ready in my own home ownership journey and um i'm so thrilled to be working with them in this capacity I host some of their videos on their rookie real estate channel. Okay. And Bigger Pockets as a platform is a platform for people who are interested in real estate investing and building wealth through real estate. So it's like house hacking yeah. and like how to do ADUs sure. and converting short term rentals and kind of yes, like yes. wholesaling and any totally. number of concepts. Yeah, it can be a lot of creative financing, you know, stories and ideas. But really, it's just these everyday people who have found a way to see those benefits of home ownership be beyond just a space to live, right? Really looking at your home and your properties as an investment that can benefit you now and far into the future. Right. So um, I host some of those videos on the Rookie Real Estate channel, which is very focused on uh, consumers who are looking to get into real estate. Maybe you have one property and you want to buy a second one. Um, maybe you don't have any properties and you're looking at how do I get into that first property? So we talk a lot about those opportunities that are available. Totally. Um, and for me, since I'm a mortgage advisor, I really talk about the opportunities that you have in the just standard traditional mortgage space, yeah. not going into those very creative financing. Sure. You're not you talking know, about subject to financing and I think like no. that. But there no. are really, I mean, if I can go back in time yeah. and go back and talk to younger Dan, yeah. <laughs> I've been like, hey, bud, instead of buying that single family residence that you bought as your primary yeah. residence when you first got into the market, home. maybe buy like a duplex or a totally. triplex or a quad. Yeah. Um, and that becomes your future rental income. Yes. And that one decision may completely change the trajectory of your life. Now, yeah. there's a bunch of hard work that's going to have to go into it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to learn how to manage tenants. You're going to need to hire a real estate attorney. Right. Because you don't know anything because you're 25. Right. 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 But let's consider this and maybe find some smart people. Yeah. Like, I don't know, some mortgage advisors that you might come in contact with. Yeah. And let's get some information about what's actually possible for a first-time home buyer mm -hmm. to take that first step in creating wealth by yes. by having someone else pay all or a part of your mortgage. Yes. Like that concept right there, I think it's overlooked all the time. Totally. Um, because frankly, it's kind of uncomfortable in a, in a way to yeah. be like, yeah, I'm going to buy a, a fourplex. I'm going to live in this, you know, this shared space yep. and be the landlord who's also living on site. Mm -hmm. um, so is that the type of stuff that you're covering yeah, your... so exactly. We cover, you know, how to get into those properties, what mm -hmm. those types of loans are that are available, and just the traditional financing yeah. world that you and I the work Fannie, in. Fannie, Freddie, yeah. FHA world. And there's so many opportunities <clears throat> available. Yeah. You know, FHA, you can go 3.5% down. Conventional, yeah, now you can go with 5% down in many areas, mm -hmm. um, depending on your loan amount. So lots of opportunities out there. And then, you know, we talk about on that channel specifically, just people's everyday stories of how, you know, they've gone from that first property to the second property, the third, the fourth. Yep. Um, and I'm what you would call a rookie investor myself. Um, I now own two properties Thanks. and then one of them is a rental and one's my primary residence, which hopefully maybe someday will also be a rental. The current rental, was that the original primary that was, residence? Yes, that you the purchased? original primary residence. So we have similar journeys in that. So yes. we bought our first house in 2012. Okay. And lived there for a bunch of years, mm -hmm. bought our current house, leveraging the equity in our first house awesome. to buy our new house. And right. now our old house is a rental. Amazing. And it's in a 15-year note. So we're awesome. five years into that. 
it. So the other, the tenant oh my cash gosh. flowing, yeah. so the tenant's going to pay off all that debt in 15 total years and life is good. So in, in theory, let's see, I just turned 40. So by the time I turn 50, the house will be paid off Amazing. and we'll have, you know, we'll just have cash property flow. taxes and insurance to pay, but no mortgage. So that's going to be a couple thousand dollars a month of cash flow. And that all stems from, you know, a three and a half percent down payment that we made when we were 20. It's eight, something like that. Right, right. It's a pretty amazing return on investment. Yes, yeah. exactly. The, probably the best investment I'll ever make. Yes, and my husband and I say the same thing with yeah. our with our house. We're like, that's the best investment we're ever going to make. Though I am going to try to top it. I love trying to get Challenge deals yourself. and yes. you know make good investments. So yeah. I'm looking for my next one where I'm like, the next one's going to be even better. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it has been an incredible investment and it will be for yeah. a long time. So. To, so I have some cool success stories from, you know, clients who've done kind of this, this thing, but yeah. tell me, tell me some of your success stories where you've seen that, you know, you, you were able to provide that advice to that sure. you know, younger person yeah. and go like, Hey, do it this way. Buy this house with an accessory dwelling, sure. live in the ADU, rent out the big house. Like, yeah. what, what, what experience have you had with that? Well, um, I think a lot of the successes that I see as successes for our first time buyers, yeah. especially are with like a down payment assistance program okay. or people who really do want to save some of that cash sure. that is, you know, everything they have. Yep. Um, and at the day, at the end of the day, I do think it's prudent to go into an investment having some cash available. Sometimes you just can't do it and that's okay. You know, you have to do what you have to do to get in. Yeah. Um, but if you can have something, you know, still in savings, that's great. So I think one of the most successful um, stories with using a first time home buyer program is we were able to get uh, these buyers into their home for literally a thousand dollars, even less than what I got into my home for. Amazing. Um, we got into ours for about <clears throat> three thousand. Nice. Um, but since now I know more information, mm -hmm. we were able to help a little more. So um, just that type of thing where we're really able to help buyers get in with very very low amounts. Are you of using Cali Cafe? Cali Cafe. Um, I really like that program for California specifically because they have very generous income limits. And a right. lot of the first-time homebuyer programs, as I'm sure you know, um, have pretty low income limits that are not as workable in an area like ours. That's so expensive. Yep. And so Cal HFA is just a lot more realistic for people in this area. Yeah, especially if you're combining it with like the ZIP program yeah. or other things like that. So yeah. if you're interested in, in Cal HFA um loans, you can reach out to one of us and, and yes. we're happy to help you with that. But yeah. essentially there's the the housing finance authority um, that's a yes. part of the California state government that gets grant money and other funds from um, from from the state. And essentially they have subsidized um, mortgage interest rates and programs, including mm -hmm. uh, second loans that are uh, forgivable or carry zero interest rates. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you pay them off when you, when you uh, sell the house or refinance. Yeah. And um, it's a really could be a really beneficial program. There are income limits. There's some other things you yes. have to, some hoops you have to jump through, some home buyer education. Right. But overall, a really good program that I think often gets overlooked. And, and, and I think people are looking at, so Cal FHA is also the entity that did the California Dream for All program. Yes. And that's what kind of got them a lot of the, the you know, fireworks and people paying attention. But yeah. people, people, what people don't know is that they operate 24 7, yes. 365 doing standard kind of conventional they loans. do and most of their products um and the one i use they offer really the minimum down which is three and three and a half percent and yeah. that product really is better for most people the dream for all as i'm sure you know and maybe you all know too if you're a part of that frenzy <laughs> yeah, it, was crazy. Um, it was just really crazy there weren't a lot of people who were able to use it because it was so backlogged there wasn't enough money for everyone um, and now they came out with stricter requirements yeah. around who you have to be yeah. to be able to use that, which I think is totally fair. Totally you fair. Know? I actually haven't so, heard. I don't think I've seen a report on the success of the second round yet. I don't know yeah, if I it's, it's completed. Been, I don't, I'm not sure. Honestly. Yeah. I had, uh, I think, five clients that applied for it and none of them yeah. got selected, which was super disappointing. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of out of the loop on exactly where we are. I, you know, I'm not sure. I haven't gotten an update from them on that program recently, mm -hmm. but it has limited it for a lot of people, which again, I think is fair, but I highly recommend their other product, which yeah. is wonderful. And it's just been around for a long time. 
And like you said, it's like it's always operating. Yeah. Right. So it's not like a portal that opens and you get a voucher and it closes. Yeah. So if you qualify, you qualify yeah. and you can use it. Um, and, and there's then, some other local um, county and citywide down payment assistance yes, programs. Yes, there are. I've had very limited success with either the Santa Rosa um, or the Burbank Housing Program. Myself as well. Basically, for what you said earlier, the income limits are yeah. so restrictive. Yes. And I actually talked to the program administrator when I was like, hey, I, I, I love down payment assistance programs. Yeah. I want to help people who otherwise wouldn't be able to do this and own a home in Sonoma mm-hmm. County. Um, the problem, here's the problem. I like, made this whole chart, this analysis. That's awesome. And I was like, there's three houses total in the county that would qualify for this if you had five people living in a three bedroom. And I'm not sure that that is what we're really trying to do. And she's like, I totally understand. Um, unfortunately, this is the program that was handed down from us mm. from the state. And okay. we're kind of stuck with these limits. And I'm yeah. like, so you realize that no one's going to be able to use this. And she's like, right. yep. I'm like, okay, okay. well, great. Glad we're at, at least we're on the same yeah, page. You're on the same page. That, Everyone understands. Yes. Well, not to <laughs> yeah. get too excited. I'm sure there are people who've been able to use those programs, but I think that um, the income limits are definitely an issue. Like you have to make a certain amount of money yeah. to qualify for. Or price point in right. this area. Yeah. Which, you know, if prices were lower in this area, sure, maybe that could be possible, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, something so dramatic would have to happen for home prices to go down. And I remind people all the time, I'm like, we, uh, there's war going on and there was a pandemic, there was a banking crisis, and still there's appreciation happening, right? right? So a lot of bad things have already happened that right. you think would tank the market and it hasn't happened. So um just something to keep in mind right for like those programs or anyone who's hoping that home prices go down to get into the market then but, yeah I'm, I'm not sure with all the mortgage reform that happened before you and i you know was or, or, or in the industry because i've been i've been doing this for eight eight or nine years so i don't okay. i was let's see i was based off how old my oldest daughter is okay oh. so she's seven so that i've been doing it for eight years okay. and um i don't know the world before trid Right. So sure. trade is like the TILA RESPA <laughs> yeah. Integrated Disclosure I don't Act. Either. Yeah. And that's like a relatively new thing. Uh-huh. And there was a lot of pushback from the industry, like this big thing, this huge change. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm like, yeah, that's just how we've always done it. Yeah. Right. So, you know. And it's the, good too. It's it's good things. Or I would debate you on that. Yes, tell me. I think trade is more confusing than anything else. Like okay. the, some okay. of the disclosures and things that we have to show people, like mm-hmm. the the total interest percentage, like no one under actually understands what that is. Like you have to explain it. It's not yes. clear. Yes. And there are plenty of mortgage lenders out there that manipulate the numbers to go, oh, look, my yeah. APR is lower. And it's like, yeah. okay, but you're charging four points right? and yeah. you're just hiding it in different ways and oh, you're gosh. changing things around. Yeah. And um, the loan estimate, like going head to head with with stuff is very mm-hmm. very confusing. It's actually muddy the totally. water further. You really do um, have to explain a lot right. to make it clear. So which is fine because I'm I'm a mortgage coach user. So shout out mortgage coach and and uh, trust engine. So what we basically do there is we take our competitors, Ellie and our Ellie. Mm-hmm. We plug the numbers head to head into mortgage coach, and yeah. we're like. You can look up and cross-reference these numbers to see where they came from. It's great. This is our deal. This is theirs. Yep. Here's why you should choose us. And if, awesome. You know, and if they're if if the other numbers are better, then we can say this is all good. But in theory, this this lock is not confirmed, right? So mm. in the top right corner oh, it says, yeah. "Is your loan locked? Yes or mm-hmm. no? It's not." So yeah. this is this this is hypothetical. Hypothetical. At this point, <laughs> this is still yeah. not real. Yes. So as soon as it's real. Then let's do another analysis and see yes. where they actually come in. Yes. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of shenanigans that people pull um, when that it comes to true. loan estimates, and it drives me drives me nuts sometimes. Yes. So, um, and don't get me started on trigger leads either, because that's another one of my <laughs> okay. hot buttons. Um, <laughs> oh. So yeah, so so we don't know the world before trade, and that's yes. okay. Um, but yeah, so I think that that the the experience for for us kind of being in this market is that we were able to the original idea was it going with is. We're able to actually provide advice. Yes. Right? So it's are. nice being able to go through these cycles. And now we're in a place where working with a loan officer who knows the market, mm-hmm. who knows the you know, the the actual manufacturing of the loan is not that critical to the overall experience. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. most people can get a loan done. Absolutely. Your ops team is mostly doing the yeah. work. Um 
but we're at a place now in the market where advice really, really matters. Yes, it does. Um, and so I think that's a really great place for people who, like me and you, I consider myself to be newer to the industry, mm-hmm. are able to really gain market share, build a reputation, and really create a career Absolutely. because of the advice that we're able to give at this point. Absolutely. you. I couldn't have said it better. And I do think, like, just going back to all the rules and regulations and all of that, I actually find that as a huge piece to be able to educate people on. And like you said, gain market share, because one of my favorite things to do is look at law matrices and see, okay, what are the qualifying metrics of this program versus this program? What would really be the best for this person? And being able to go even beyond like some of these Fannie and Freddie products and looking at like bank statement loans and all of these things that, um, you know, we've been able to really help people with who thought they couldn't do it. And I think that's what inspired me in the beginning to get into the business. And I've not been disappointed by that. There are so many amazing products available for people. And like you said, just finding that person, that mortgage advisor who'll work with you on helping you find what that is for you. Yeah, totally. I had a client last week who is an experienced investor Mm -hmm. and um, they essentially buy companies that are floundering. Okay. And then do change management to turn them around and then sell them. Oh, so they have very like cool. huge um, exit events where they mm-hmm. might make zero dollars for many, many years or pay okay. themselves a very meager salary. Mm-hmm. And then they'll sell the business and make millions of dollars. Right. And they're right. like, well, we haven't done that for a number of years. So our tax returns okay. look really terrible, but okay. we want to buy this investment property. And mm-hmm. I was like, no worries. Have like, let's just do a debt service, like a DSCR loan. Yeah. And they're like, you know, very savvy, like, MBA business yeah, school types. Yeah. They're like, what's that? I'm like, how many houses there have you, you bought and know. sold? And they're like, I don't know, 50. I'm like, wow. no one's ever explained to you. Wow. Like, they have a portfolio of investment properties and yeah. like, no one ever explained to you. And like, no, we've always had to submit full documents and tax returns. And, you no know, we just, way. and I'm like, what That's is going amazing. on with That's our, amazing. like, I feel like there's an opportunity for loan officers. And I feel like we, repeat the same messages over and over and over again into yeah. social media and the content you're creating and bigger pocket yeah. podcasts yeah. and all this other stuff. And still the message is not permeating to everybody. Yeah. Like there are yeah. thousands of loan options. There's right. bank statement loans. Yes. There's W two or ten ninety nine or W two yeah. only loans. There's yeah. debt service coverage ratio loans. There's ITIN loans. Like yes. you, you, there's yes. um and a separate note. I was recently traveling abroad Mm -hmm. and I was talking to um, one of the locals where I was and they were talking about wanting to buy an investment property in Miami. Okay. And I was like, cool. He's like, but can we even do that? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. It's like a foreign national. Exactly. Yeah. How come we don't know about this? I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, let me know. I have a loan officer who's actually licensed in Florida that speaks Spanish. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. You know? So great. So yeah. And so they're like, oh, we have a bunch of people to send to you because it's not only us, oh it's all gosh. of our friends. And I'm like, great. We're going to have this pipeline of people Amazing. using a foreign national program. That is awesome. Yeah. People don't know. Yeah. So how do we, how do we get people to understand? Well, so- subscribe to your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. And, you know, I understand because as a first time buyer or even a buyer who's looking into a more interesting type of product, yeah. right? On my um, recent home I purchased, I used a 2 1 buy down, okay. which is, you know, something that's gaining more momentum in a market like this, but it's not something everyone knows about. Um, and because of that experience, I was able to help another buyer do that too. But I know, you know, as a first time buyer or an investor who is not used to another type of product, it can be scary. Yeah. And I do think that getting to that next step of like hearing the content and the education is first being able to feel like you can trust the person right. and trust the information and even trust reaching out to someone. And I know like from my own experience where I could have bought my first house years before, I didn't because I didn't feel like I was ready to reach out to someone. And I wish I did. Right. That's the that's the number one thing I wish I did differently was I wish I had reached out to a mortgage advisor earlier and been like, hey, what can I do? What are Help me with here? my yeah. options. And I think, you know, people don't understand too, like how we get paid. I have people ask me all the time, 
oh, well, how much is it to meet with you? And I'm like, it doesn't cost anything. I wish we could charge for initial <laughs> consultations. That would be great. I, mean, I would yeah, love it. No. And, but, but people don't yeah. know that, you know? So it's like providing that information too, where it's like, it doesn't cost anything. Anyone who's trying to charge you, that's not legal. You can't do that, you know? Do people actually try to do that, do you think? I, I have not come across anyone who has, yeah. but... People think that. By the way, if you're you listening know? to this and someone's trying to charge you for yes. a loan consultation, that's super illegal. You cannot yes, do you that. Cannot do <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay somebody. No. Yes. So, um, you know, just that information even of like, it doesn't cost anything. They're not going to get paid, you know, until you decide to work with them and your house closes. It's right. like, you're not exchanging any funds, right? And most of the time, I mean... Mortgage advisors, they're advisors for a reason. They love what they do, like me and you, and they want to help people. And I wish I had understood that in my beginning of getting into this journey. Yeah. Um, you know, whether you're an investor or a first time buyer or looking some for something creative to do, a lot of times you're not going to know what those opportunities are and what the possibilities are unless you ask someone. Right. And so I think just trying to make that ask less scary, Yeah, you know, however we can do that. And I would also say, in addition to that, uh, yes, and um, if you are, like you submitted a full application and you're not getting advice from the mortgage advisor, there's like, oh yeah, you're pre-approved. Let me know when you need a pre-approval letter. Yeah. Stop there. Yeah. That person should be fired. Yeah. And you should move on to a loan officer who will take the time. Yes. It doesn't have to be hours and days. Like take an hour, take 45 minutes, whatever you have at in least. your time. It's such a big purchase, yeah. at and, least 45 minutes, you know? Take a 45 minute to an hour call and really understand the process. Like who are the players involved? How does, how does everyone get paid? Yeah. What are you responsible for? Yeah. What are contingency periods? Like just take you through the basic basics. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and then do a deep dive into like, hey, I've analyzed your financials and based off of your long and short term mm-hmm. goals, here are some options I think can work for you, but I'm not the one who pays the mortgage for the exactly. next 30 years. You are. So you need to understand this and what questions can I answer for you. Exactly. Like, it's not that hard. No. But I don't I think that most loan officers in our industry don't take the time to do that. And it's a disservice to the to the community, it's a disservice yeah. to the buyers. And it, honestly, it, it hurts the reputation overall. It of does. what we do. Yeah. Because it's not as simple as push button, get mortgage, no. regardless of what you hear no. online yeah. or see on Super Bowl commercials. It is a very complicated <laughs> yeah. process that you need a professional yeah. to advise you yes. and help you understand what you're signing up for. Absolutely. And, you know, even if you have the most perfect profile, the best credit, the easiest income, everything, sure, you could use an AI tool and, you know, see what happens. But at the end of the day, you're not going to get that advice. You're not going to get that information. And you're not going to have that person who's able to answer those questions for you. And I do think, you know, that's where, though, having those online tools, it does make it easier for some people. Um, But like you, like you're saying, I come up, I come in contact with so many people who get this letter from a bank or whatever it is. And there was no conversation around what that is. And then when I get their application, I'm like, well, how did they get you to that number? Like, uh, you know, it it doesn't even make sense. And if you had written offer with that, your loan would have fallen through most likely. And no one wants to be in that situation. No, talk about a disappointing gut punch. Like, oh yeah, I'm so excited about this house. I've imagined what Christmas morning looks there Mm -hmm. and then it's just taken because some loan officer didn't do their job. Right. Or, you know, even the opposite. I've definitely had instances where the opposite, where it's like you get a pre-approval. Someone's like, well, I got a pre-approval from this bank, but, you know, no one talked to me and all of that. And then we do their numbers and they're like approved for 200,000 more than they could have been otherwise. They could have afforded a a house that met their needs more. Yeah. Um, So it's just like you're saying, having those conversations and working with someone who's willing to do that with yeah totally you. yeah and and I, I going back to the ai thing um i think my stance on ai is when it can do a better job than i do then they can have my job absolutely and until yes. that happens <laughs> um i will keep my job yes and i think ai is a great tool we're using it in a bunch of different ways mm-hmm. you know just to to make our process more streamlined yeah. i know that our bank is using ai on yeah. ai on, yeah. on stuff and mm-hmm. analyzing tax returns but you still need the human 
to like look at the overall loan and make a credit decision about it and build trust. And when AI tools can build trust with the consumer, not just give them data and information, (laughs) then I will happily hand over the keys and they can, they can do it for us and we can all just get mortgages from robots. I don't see that happening. I, you know, I don't either just because there's so many regulations and so many laws that continue to change. Um, you know, take this new thing with buyer's agreements, right, for realtors and what that all looks like with everything. We don't have to yeah, go yes. into that. But we did, um, I think I did a whole episode on the uh, the National Association of Realtors, um, you know, settlement that changes the buyer broker agreement yeah. and a bunch of other stuff, yes. which is now crazy so, problems with that. But yes, a, exactly. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like so many things where they're struggling to figure out what needs to actually be put in place. And so you can't even change algorithms until all of those rules are completely rules and in place for the algorithm to even pick those up. So with that being said, you're always going to need some type of human oversight until everything is just perfect. And unfortunately, I don't know if everything's ever going to be just perfect. You know, I think there's there's a lot of automations. There's, you know, things like the work number and other things sure. that just make our life, which is an income verification tool yeah. um, that make the overall manufacturing more streamlined. Yes. But the, like what they call the last mile of origination from, from basically, you know, the consumer that connects directly with the mortgage mm-hmm. bank, um, that is where we are essential, will remain essential. If an AI tool can draw docs, and analyze the tax return. That's great. Sure. I'm happy to implement that. Yeah. We're using AI to like take meeting notes and we use AI on this podcast to create our show notes and to Just create links great. and saves me hours Absolutely. when I don't have to edit things. Yes. I use an AI tool to make the clips of the show. It saves awesome. me hours and hours yes. and hours and you know reallocating assets from mm-hmm. where there's a person doing it. Now I have the AI tool. So we're using it in all those different ways, but it doesn't replace the, the need for a real estate agent. It doesn't replace the need for a title company. Yeah. It doesn't replace the need for a mortgage advisor yeah. um, unless you are doing the bare minimum and you're just analyzing the tax returns and spitting yeah. out a letter, then that's what the AI can do. So sure. there, if you're the type of loan officer, well, I guess my, my, my point of this is mm-hmm. if you're the type of loan officer who is, not you, if one <laughs> is a loan officer who... Um, is just analyzing tax returns, calculating income, analyzing, a, you know, looking at a bank statement to see what the current balance is mm-hmm. and saying, yep, you fit the box, your DTI is X and right. that will fit the A, you know, mm-hmm. running AUS and you get mm-hmm. an approved eligible. Mm-hmm. Here's your approval letter. The AI can do that currently. It can do that. Now, mm-hmm. um, and you will lose your job if that's, yes. if that's all you're doing. Mm-hmm. But if you're providing a high level of advice and expertise, you're giving advice that only you know because of your life experience. Yeah. Um, you will have a job. Absolutely. And you'll be successful. Yes. And that will be fine. And you know, at the end of the day, like I tell this to my clients all the time, and I do believe it to be true. I'm going through another purchase recently. Is that it is such a large purchase, right? It's like this is such a huge investment in yourself, in your family, in your legacy. You know. You want someone to be there mm-hmm. who can answer your questions. And I think the AI, it does remove some of the barrier because it is vulnerable to, right? All this information is so vulnerable, so personal. But that's where if you're working with someone who is someone that you can trust and who's really going to be looking out for your best interest and not just be there spitting out a letter right. or giving you numbers without any explanation, then they're going to be with you on that journey for a long time. Mm -hmm. And with such a large investment, I would hope that that's what all of us are looking for. For And not just that, you know, well, just tell me if I can do it and then I'll take care of it myself. Right. right? Just as we have financial advisors and, uh, you know, people who help us do the things with big parts of our money that we don't know how to do. Yeah. Um, That's really, you know, what we're here to do is provide that, advice and that shoulder to lean on when there is a question that comes up that you're not sure about. And Hopefully there are some we're like, going to make the time to do that. 100%. And there are some like DIY options, basically. Like if you're sure. going to use an online, I won't name anyone, but if you're going to lose like an online warehouse driven, you know, um, mortgage company, like you're going to do the heavy lifting yourself. There's yes. a reason why they're 
you know, that they're able to provide the lowest price mm-hmm. or lowest rate on a loan is because mm-hmm. they're, they don't have any support. Yeah. So you can self-drive if you want to. Yes. Um, that already exists. You can it does. Google that and, you know, do that thing. Um, but for a very meager increase in your rate, because it will be higher, right? Mm-hmm. You just can't compete with some of the low cost, yeah. you know, um, loan providers. Uh, it's strictly on rate, but if you're looking at overall value, yeah, there's nothing more valuable than a loan officer in your community that knows the people, knows the mm. houses, knows the process, is going to hold your hand and walk through it and text you back at eight o'clock at night. Absolutely. You know? so, anyway, um, yes. uh, I'd, I would be silly of me not to ask about other things happening in your life. You mm. just had, well, not just, about a year ago, yes. had your first child. Yes. So I tell did. us about oh my gosh. your daughter. Okay. So my baby girl, yes. Sophia, she's my favorite person in the world. Um, I just absolutely adore her. And uh, we're just having such a fun time. And, you know, she's walking and just, I think she's getting ready to talk. Probably oh, she does goodness. a lot of babbling and is so cute. <laughs> nice. So I love being her mama. And, you know, I, I just feel so fortunate to be able to work and be, you know, a mom and a wife and be able to do it all, but I love it all. So it's like, yeah. you know, why wouldn't I try to do that? So, and I wanted to mention do, that you, you had taken a little bit of time off because we've been trying to do this yeah. podcast for a while. Yeah. And I wanted to say that I'm really impressed that you oh, took the time you. away to be with the family. Yeah. And I think that people take that stuff for granted, honestly. Mm. I know lots of people in our industry that's like, oh, baby was born yesterday and back in the office tomorrow. Yeah. It's yeah. like, dude. Enjoy those moments. There's plenty of loans. Your clients will understand. Your partners get it. You're not going to lose a realtor relationship because you're like, I'm going to actually take a couple months off and spend some time with my family. You know, this other person in the office will help you. Yeah. Um, So congratulations to you. That's really cool that you did that. That is so kind of you. Grateful that there are people like you in the industry that like have the priorities lined up correct. Oh, you're so kind. Well, I, I was so grateful to be able to do that. And I'm um, so grateful to my clients and realtor partners and other referral partners for, you know, sticking there with me and um, definitely was trying to communicate with people a little bit during that time. But sure. like you said, there's always more loans. And, you know, I had a great partner and team member who was able to help my clients while I was out. Yep. And that made me feel so confident. If I didn't have that, you know, who knows what that yep. off period would have looked like. But I just had such a great team member who was there for my clients. So my biggest thing is customer service and making people feel like they matter and they're important. And my team, my team member was able to, you know, pick up that slack for me while I was out. And um, it was just a wonderful experience. Good. And so uh, I'm so happy I was able to do that. Yeah. Those are moments that you never get back. Even if you guys no. have subsequent children. Yeah. All right. That first Four months with the first baby is the, the only time you ever get that experience. Yeah. And it's it's really wonderful. Those are some of the best times. Um, my wife and I were just talking the other day about like our seven year old came in yeah. at like nine o'clock and she was like, Can I watch another, you know, show on my tablet? And we're like, Yeah, hey, it's actually bedtime. You know. <laughs> and we were just like, How did she get so big so fast? That oh. She was just a tiny little baby. Yeah. And now she's a second grader who knows oh two gosh. languages and oh like my has gosh. You know, interests wow. and things that she cares about and knows about. Right. And it's like, oh man. So yeah, good. Um, good for you for taking that Thank time you, away. Dan. That was really cool. That was really happy to see that you did that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and if you're a woman, you also know you kind of need it for having a baby. I think so. Yes. <laughs> and I, th- I mean, I, I, I didn't totally disconnect um, the for any of the three because we have three three oh, kids. Okay. But I definitely took a major step back. Okay. Um, and was just kind of punting things to the team and yeah. letting them handle it and then only jumping in for maybe an hour or two a day while sure. while mom and the whatever baby was sleeping. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I was talking to my production partner. Uh, well, she's now a loan officer, but at the time was my production partner. And we're looking at the pipeline, looking at refi opportunities mm-hmm. and stuff. And I was like, who is this client? And she's like, oh, I remember them. Like, I, I kind of handled that. And I was like, why wasn't, where was I? And she was like, well, look <laughs> at the date. That was December of 2021. That's when... Liz was born, so you were, oh. you were gone. And I was like, oh, you just totally handled the whole thing. So 
pretty funny looking back at the pipeline. I'm like, I have no recollection of talking to the people. Oh my gosh. But the loan still funded in my name, even though Avita oh, was the sure. one who yeah. did all the stuff. So she's like, actually, that's my client. Oh. That. <laughs> Copy that. And that's the amazing thing, though, team about approach. working with yeah. such a great, you know, team. Yeah. It's like, if you have a team, you know, you're there for each other. 100%. And it makes those other times that you hope you can be with family and take off more possible. Yeah, so. Exactly. Cool. Um, anything else that we should know about you? Where do you think rates are going? What are we doing? We just had a rate oh, cut last week, 50 question. basis points. Yes. And that's the, I'm sure you answered this a million times. Yeah. Um, rates kind of did nothing. Yes. Which was my big thing that I was telling people would most right. likely happen. So let's, let's recap. So last week, <laughs> Uh, the Fed cut rates by 50 yeah. basis points. We are, what is the Monday? Today's the 23rd while we're recording mm -hmm. this. This will come out on Friday, likely. So we're five days ago. When mm -hmm. people are listening to this, it was Monday. Um, well, it'll be Friday, but today's Monday. Mm -hmm. And last week, the Fed cut the rate by 50 basis points. Yes. And I'm not sure about your rate sheets, but my rate sheets were kind of flat. They just yes. kind of did nothing. Totally flat the same day. And then the next day, you know, rates got a tiny bit worse yeah. as bonds did as well. So it's like, you know, they kind of are, they move together most of the time, yep. if you're looking at those um, yields and those numbers. And it was something, you know, that I had been talking to my clients about too. It's like, hey, these are kind of the different outcomes we can see that could be possible. And the economic data coming out prior to that meeting was not pointing to something better than what we were expecting. Um, and if anything, it could be worse, worse right? right? Which is kind of what happened. The Fed came out. Being like the economy is strong, we think this is a good cut, and we should do it. But the economy is strong, and not everyone agreed on the cut, which was huge because apparently that had to hadn't happened in a very long time. Right. So it was a pretty so, dramatic first cut. Right. So it was seemingly we haven't cut rates since since the pandemic. Yes. Right. And um, the question I think the investors were asking is: Is fifty basis points telling us that the economy is not as good? as we think it is, that we actually need to cut rates further to spur more economic activity because we've we've overshot the landing and now sure. we're going to go into a recession and do we really think, you know, what's going to happen, well, what's going to happen next? And so I, uh, I think what needs to happen for rates to really feel that impact and to go like march downward is, um, it is for subsequent financial data yes. to come out that supports the Fed's decision to cut the rates, but still shows that the economy is strong. Yes. And when that happens, then we'll see the rate impact that we've been looking for and we'll yeah. get those future, you know, the, the declines. Um, and we'll just have to see though, right. because, you know, I'm sure as many of you viewers who are watching know as well, uh, those things change daily. Right. And there's all these different you know, I, economic reports that come out totally, weekly. Totally. And so I think, you know, what I'm really trying to help my clients understand right now is, again, going back to that mindset of we can't predict the future. Right. So if we're always trying to time the market, sometimes, as we just saw, is a great example of that. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Right. Even with so much data available um, and the data pointed to exactly what happened. So there wasn't really anything off there. That I happened. wasn't shocked that rates didn't go down. No, absolutely not. But I think a lot of our consumers, and I think I try to have as many conversations as possible, but there's only so many hours yes, in the day. Yes, yes. And I was just like, I expect nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. That rates will, there'll be some immediate trading up and down, and then it will kind of level out to be a nothing. Well, and that's pretty exactly. much Exactly. Well, because the reality is the rate already adjusted right. weeks before. Once the market priced in that probability of a 50 basis point cut, which it had right. been expecting that once that expectation happened, that's when rates fell. Yep. Um, and so that was really you know, the point where there was some opportunity to probably lock in at the very, very lowest. But again, you know, we're all on this journey together, yep. right? And I totally understand also um, clients' mindsets around, well, let's just see what happens. Yep. Right. It's it's really hard to be like, well, let's pull the trigger and then see what happens. Yeah. But I think this was a really good practice, right? Of these next two meetings coming up with the Fed. Let's see what happens. Right. And there's mm -hmm. no guarantee that rates are going to continue to go down. Exactly. I exactly. believe they will. Yeah. What's your do you think they will as well? I think they will as well. Um, especially next year. I think, you know, the Fed mentioned that they'd like to do two cuts at these next two meetings. Um, 
this but the year. data has to support it. Exactly. And the they've data been very has clear to support it. that the data has to support it. And yep. if it's off by a smidge, then they're going to do nothing. Exactly. And the next meeting isn't until after the election. So it will be, I think, very interesting to see how the market reacts in general. Yeah. And again, depending on what data comes out, we'll just have to see what that looks like. Who's policies and who's yeah it's not only the presidential election but it's also the the house and senate races yes. that a lot of policy will be decided decided and and who's got a majority who controls what chambers yeah um so that'll be very very interesting to see yes so, and we'll to yes wait and see what happens yes we just have to wait and see and i do think to circle back to your point about you can refinance multiple times right if we're thinking about this new election, too, which will most likely be quite impactful, um, the president is not going to take office until the end of January. So any new policy changes couldn't even happen until after that point. You know, you are elected after right. the election, but you don't take office and you can't start working sure. and all of that until that time. Yeah. And so, because of President Biden stepping aside, we're guaranteed to have a lame duck session we kind of no matter who sure. no matter who gets elected now if if uh, vice president harris is elected then she'll obviously have the inside track because her party yes. is already already in the, in the white house and she'll likely have a lot of the same advisors that yes. president biden has Absolutely. and that would be kind of a faster track to get some policies started yes um if it goes the other direction then it's a wild right you know who, who knows, knows what's gonna happen and the the point to that, though, is you can still refinance now. And if something crazy happens yep. with the new president, since they're not going to be putting any of that into effect as the new president until the end of January, most likely you'd be on track then to refinance yep. if you wanted to. Likely. So, you know, uh, just keep those things in mind, right? <laughs> it's like we can't predict the future, but we can try to position ourselves as well as possible with the information we have now. And I think to departing to, to to wrap this conversation up, I think what you just said combined with something you said earlier, which is talk to a loan officer sooner than later. If you if you have a rate that starts with a six or higher, have a conversation with your loan officer. Yes. Um, if you did a, a originated a loan and, and and you don't like that loan officer, didn't have a good experience, reach out to someone else, interview yeah. a couple of people, have some conversations, yes. see who's providing the advice and kind of who you're jiving with, and then move forward. Um, and just understand that um, that uh, it's okay to have multiple conversations. Yeah, but then my ask is that you make a decision and you stick with it, right? Absolutely. Like decide on who you're going to work with yeah. and stick to that decision and yes. then move forward. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, if you're working and talking with good people, they're not going to mind that you're talking with other people. We all want you to find the best fit, yep. right? So I'm not for everybody. And that's okay. Yes, me either. Yep. And me that's okay. either. Yeah. Awesome. So, but you'll find the one that's the right one. Hannah, thank you for being on the show. It's thank great you that you're able to connect me. and congratulations on all your success and looking, you. looking forward to see what happens next for you. All right. Thanks for being on By the Bay and we'll see you next time. Stay up to date with Bay Area Real Estate. Hit subscribe now if you haven't already. Did you enjoy this episode? We love reviews in the Apple Podcasts app. We'll read yours on the show. This is By the Bay. Media.